Um, thank you for giving one uh, to the start. You might not want to give one at the end, but let's see how this goes. Um, it's been a while. It's been a while since I did a presentation, but uh, I'm going to try and keep this easy. I've got 20 minutes. Is that right, Brian? He's not listening. 20 minutes. Yes. Okay. Um, so to try and condense everything I know about Emacs in 20 minutes, uh, I haven't managed to do that, uh, unfortunately. But uh, I'll try and give you a taste of what you can do with Emacs, flavor of what you can do. Is everybody using Emacs already? Hey, is everybody using uh, Vi or Vim? Oh, there we go. I'll be using both in this presentation, so no need to leave straight away. Um, the, the, we have uh, we have kind of melded them together, so the war in, is officially over, uh, and um, you can use both and be happy uh, if you wish. So, what is Emacs? Uh, let's have a look and see what it says. Um, who wants to guess when Emacs was first released? What year? Just shout around. 83, I think that was right. I've, I've only just looked it up. Yeah, 83, 85, sorry. No, 80, 83, <laughs> see, 83 is uh, another um, another thing. So actually this is, uh, Emacs is one of the major kind of pieces of software out of the free uh, open source movement. So who's heard of Richard Stallman? Anybody? Yes, anybody managed to grow a beard that bushy? That's an awesome beard he's got. Um, uh, and so it was. Uh, he started this new project, which was uh, started in, in back in uh, 1983, which is why I got temporarily confused. It happens quite a lot. Um, and basically, I mean, the interesting thing between this is it, it, we've got open source these days, but this was open source before there was a term open source. And this is even more kind of uh, open because it's about having the freedom and access to the software that you're using. So you should be, whether something's open source or not, it should be fully accessible. You should be able to collaborate around it. You should have a license that allows you and encourages you also to share uh, and get involved in the software as well. So anybody can actually go in and, and contribute to uh, like free open source uh, software as well. There's, there's the, the, the license allows you to take away, play with it, experiment and learn. So a lot of open source software, um, especially the stuff that came from GNU and also Linux itself, encourage you to learn because it had a license that allowed you to go away and, and make it your own thing. Uh, and I think that's one thing that does make it, uh, yeah, makes software much more pervasive is the fact that people, anybody can come along and take that software and go and do what it, do with it whatever they wish. And, uh, sorry, logo, oh, there's a logo there as well, thank you very much. Um, and uh, yeah, it's kind of based on these basic freedoms like uh, freedom to run software, freedom to share the software where you want so you can distribute this. So you might come across the GNU uh, license as well. Uh, so there's a big long license there as well. So you don't have to uh, deal with all these kind of end, end user license agreements that you might be familiar with. There's none of that there. There's, not, there's no restrictions on this software. The license is there to make, it, uh, to make it as free and open as possible. So when people talk about free and open software, open source software, the free as in it's not giving it away for free, but it's a freedom to do whatever you wish with that software as well. Um, you may have noticed, I'm, what do you think I'm actually using for this presentation? Emacs. Emacs, there we go, there we go. So it is Emacs, I'm using my own, drinking my own champagne is the, uh, the nicer version of that phrase. Um, and installing Emacs is pretty easy. Uh, there's a whole bunch of instructions on the web page, so I'm just gonna follow that link, there we go. Uh, so it's available on all operating systems and Windows. Uh, so you can take your choice for how you want to use that. Uh, so obviously it's very easy to install on GNU Linux. Uh, the website is quite it's quite pretty actually. It's uh, they kind of did this up a year ago, so I made it made it prettier. Um, and it gives you a whole bunch of features. There's there's a gazillion features. The nice thing about um, Emacs is that if you want to do something with electronic bits, then you can pretty much do it in Emacs. There's probably a mode for absolutely everything. Uh, so I'm just going to cover some of those. Uh, and so uh, let's see where we go. So installing Emacs. I'm not going to go through installing Emacs. That would be take us forever. But one of the really nice uh, aspects of Emacs is this uh, something called org mode, uh, organization. So you can organize uh, your documentation, you can organize your to-do lists. Uh, you may notice I'm doing my presentation in org mode as well. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of features there that you can do uh, in org mode as well. Um, so you can do this editing, this structured editing, and it's just using text. So all my, all my headings and so on, when I'm collapsing them, uh, I'm not doing anything particularly special with the text. It's actually just, uh, it's just actually using uh, dots. Uh, so I can create a new heading 
just by doing uh, dot, dot, dot. And I've got a new heading or a subheading. Uh, and that's, it's really, so there's no actual requirement for Emacs to be able to do, to use org mode. You can just use it as a text. Uh, it's all just text uh, things. It's just Emacs presents it in a nice way. So there's no reason why you couldn't use this in other editors as well. Let's delete that. Ooh. Is that me? Heavy breathing. And, oh yeah, the features there. And there's also things like planning you can do there. Uh, you can plan your whole uh, calendar in there as well, so you don't need to use uh, like sort of online calendars like Google Google Calendar and so on. You can actually just do it all within Emacs uh, and have a whole bunch of to-dos, and the to-dos can go through states as well. So you can go through to-do, doing, done, uh, and you can even put a time. You can automatically put a time when you close a task or close um, some planning that you do. It will actually update and put a little time timestamp when you did it. So you can even do your own uh, timesheets in uh, Emacs as well if you wanted to. And uh, does anybody have to do timesheets at work? No. A few people, yeah, we have to do them, they're horrible. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're not the most exciting things in the world. And so, yeah, you could, you could clock all your tasks you wanted to uh, uh, in Emacs as well as you're doing them. And there's even a, a spreadsheet uh, uh, to allow you to do things as well. Um, so we got uh, custom stations. Where did I put that spreadsheet? Uh, ooh, I've lost it now. Um, whoops. Uh, we'll come back to that. I'm sure it's in there somewhere. Uh, and then, yeah, you can have your own agenda built up as well from all the tasks uh, and all the uh, calendar events you can do. You can build your own sort of little uh, uh, agenda so you know what to do, when to do it, and whether you've done something. Uh, whether you've remembered to feed the cats, uh, have you taken the rubbish out, whatever it are, tasks you need to manage, you can you can kind of do them there. So it, in a way, it's kind of your own little Jira uh, application as well. Surprisingly enough, or not surprisingly enough, there's also Jira mode, so you can actually connect to Jira ticketing system and other ticketing, si ticketing systems as well. Emacs is so flexible, you can actually just build a mode that will go off and connect to anything. Um, you can either write that in eList, but you can write a plugin uh, on the C level as well. And you can just capture on the fly, you can capture to do items as well. So if you just remember, think of something and say, oh, I need to do this, you can just very quickly create a to do item. And it goes and puts it into your to do list, which then also goes into your agenda as well. And uh, you can also build tables as well. Uh, so let's see, where did I do my tables? Oh, there we go, tables. Uh, let's jump around a little bit. So I'm going to do tables first. So you can also move things around in the order. So I'm doing tables first. I'm moving that to the top of the list. But you can kind of reorder your uh, content very, very easily in org mode. Um, where did I put that now? Whoops. Uh, dun, 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 tables. There we go. Uh, so here's a simple table here we've added. Uh, we've got a little bit of uh, code in here that basically just does all the calculation for us. So uh, you can actually have treat this as a spreadsheet inside Emacs as well, because uh, we all have spreadsheets. And let's see, if we just change this to a, let's change that to a nine, and we just recalculate that spreadsheet, and it recalculates all the all the numbers for us. Uh, so it's very easy to use, and uh, we don't have to wait for Excel to start up. Uh, and you can also move the content around as well. So I can move uh, the students around. Oops, there we go. And um, create different sections and so on. So it's very easy to move information around. And, and yeah, uh, it's very hard to kind of do that in Excel unless you kind of learn all the key bindings. And there we go. And you can do pretty much any kind of formula you can think of in here. You can do, but you can also tie this to uh, like a programming language as well if you wanted to. Uh, we can do images, uh, we can do uh, links as well as you would do, so you can actually embed links into there as you've seen, I've, I've kind of been embedding links into um, the content I've been doing, so I can just create a link by just by highlighting uh, some text uh, and then just go and select, uh, this is the org mode menu and then I can just select, go and insert a link, paste the link in there and it will just create a link for me as well. And off we go, and then I can just go and follow it. Uh, and uh, quick plug, this is my book on Space Max and Emacs using that as well. Uh, you can, uh, feel free to buy it, it is free, so that might be uh, a good challenge, uh, interesting challenge to go and buy it. Uh, there we go. Uh, there we go, 
So, and, and you can do images as well. Uh, so we can go actually go and even download an image from the uh, from the internet, assuming the internet is working fast enough today. So let's go and just do uh, org drop down image and give it a URL. And there we go, little little horsey. So this is the org mode uh, unicorn. Uh, we all like unicorns as well. And then something for the festive season. Uh, oops. Oop. Boom, boom, boom. I'm not used to my own keyboard now. There we go. Oops, did I do something? Yeah, I guess I did something there. Boom, boom, boom. There we go. Boom, wow. Uh, oh, let's make that smaller. Oops. Boom, let's make this text smaller. There we go. Oh, it's all in one line. Right, that'll work now. There we go. Uh, yeah, so I can do something festive for... Uh, what did I do there? Oh, no. Ah, you can tell I practiced this uh, and didn't just write this five minutes before I started. Uh, there we go. Uh, let's do it here. Uh, download image. Oh, yes, I did. Oh, no, there we go. So all these, uh, all Emacs is driven by these functions you can call, and you can either have key bindings for them, which is normal. Oh, little funny cat. Oh. Um, or you can actually just, uh, so I'm driving a lot of this with key bindings, but I can also like just type in the name of the function as well, and there's like there's hundreds of functions I can go and look at. Um, and uh, each one of them is self-documenting as well, so if you don't know what a function does, you can start typing its name and go and actually browse through um, the descriptions and uh, understand what's actually happening in, the, uh, uh, in that function as well and how to use it. And you can also go and look at the source of those as well, because uh, most of this is written in Lisp, so you can actually go in and edit the uh, the code and change it. And so it's why one of the reasons why Emacs is one of the most uh, flexible uh, editors out there, because it's got this entire ecosystem, this entire language you can build, uh, just pretty much anything in Emacs uh, by using Emacs Lisp. Uh, you do have to learn a little bit of Lisp, but there's lots and lots of Lisp out there to kind of help you and guide you as well. Just remember to type the brackets, and you're on a good uh, track to uh, being able to do Lisp. Where did we get to? Have we had enough yet? We still want more? Yay! Cool. There we go. We're still there. Where did I get to? And uh, yeah, so in the image, I also do presentations on this as well, and uh, I, I can do like text-based presentation if you want. But if you want something more graphical. I've also created uh, presentations from this. So this was just an org mode file. Uh, and the different pages are, are like the content under each section. I can just very quickly create, add uh, a, like a very kind of nice, fancy kind of presentation uh, just by yeah, just writing all this in org mode. So I didn't actually have to like design where everything was going. I just put in the content into org, org mode and just get it to generate uh, all, the, uh, all the things for me and uh, putting code in there as well. And it can also generate uh, PDFs, and you can generate um, things from LaTeX as well. If you're doing scientific papers, there's something called LaTeX, which allows you to do all sorts of different uh, fancy math mathematical formulas as well you can put into there as well. And you can generate that all and generate it out into very, uh, you know, very proper looking scientific paper and get that printed out as a PDF, or, a, or a, even a PostScript file, um, which I believe they do use. Uh, some examples of that? Yeah, so exporting. So if you've, anybody used LaTeX before? Yeah, a few people. Yeah, so this is really good for doing that. It's a really good uh, client for doing that as well. So the LaTeX mode you can use. And you can just export it as well. You can also include uh, source code in there as well and get it to generate the answers as well. So you can actually do what they call literal uh, literate programming. You actually write a document, but actually include uh, source code snippets in there. and. Uh, you can actually change and interact with that with that code and get it to generate results as well, and uh, it's a really nice way to kind of actually yeah create a design document around the the code that you're building. Uh, who are the developers in the house? The developers, a few, a few operations teams, a few. Everybody else just loves Emacs. There we go. Cool. And you can even get Augmo for your phone as well, which is uh, amazing. But you can get most things with your phone these days. Um, what else have we got? Uh, so I use I use Ogmo for a, like a developer journal as well, and um, to do lists. Uh, you can even use uh, social media. 
So you can even have uh, Twitter. Uh, and if you use Twitter or these kind of things anymore, then um, you can also have Twitter, your Twitter feed inside, um, inside Emacs if you wanted to. So one of the things that people who get slightly obsessed with Emacs, like myself, uh, tend to do as much as possible in Emacs. Uh, and I think I only use browsing outside of Emacs just because um, I like pretty pictures inside there as well. And uh, browsing is, is OK, but it's, uh, it's not necessarily the best thing. And, um, but yeah, you can do as much as you want to do inside Emacs. Um, I also use Markdown for blogging as well. Um, I do a, a, the blog at uh, JRocket. Oh, that's a bit of self-promotion there again. That's terrible. Uh, so all this blog is written in Markdown, which is written in, uh, which I use Emacs for, and I just have a tool to generate some static site uh, things for that as well. And I use some of the features in uh, in org mode, like tables uh, for like uh, for structuring uh, I different documentation as well. Um, so there's one for uh, Closure Bridge London, where we have um, let's see, oops, heavy breathing. Remember not to breathe heavily into the microphone. There we go. Uh, yeah, so I can create uh, like tables like this as well. So I can structure information. You can't really see the, the lines on there. There are lines on my screen, but not on that screen. And um, this makes it easy to kind of uh, visualize and structure that. So even, even though it, this is an Ogmo table, uh, I can inject that features into, into the markdown uh, mode that I'm using as well. Uh, so it allows me to use different features in different languages as well. And speaking of languages, there is a, there's a whole bunch of languages uh, actually supported in, uh, in Emacs as well. Um, pretty much all of these languages, so Clojure, Emacs, Lisp, uh, Haskell, Java, Scala, PHP, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, Ruby, Erlang, Lua, lots of things I haven't actually heard of as well, LaTeX obviously. I'm not sure what the butterfly is. If anybody knows, please let me know. Um, what is that then? Uh, oh, Perl, Perl 6, apparently. There we go. Who knew that one? Uh, that was a pull request, uh, so I hadn't actually looked at it, but yeah, I'm sure it's fine. Uh, so again, all this website is, is generated by a static site generator, but you can actually write all this in org mode and get it to generate the website for you as well. How much time have we got left? I've completely lost. Has anybody had enough yet? No. A few moments. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, and there's uh, Maggot. So we all love version control. Does anybody not use version control? No. I was never just going to admit that. OK. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you can, let's see, let's switch to a different, I'm going to switch to a different layer. So this is where I've been doing some coding. Um, and um, I can just, I can fire up a, um, a Git client. Oops. If I press the right button, uh, and then you can see I've got lots of untracked files because I, I haven't pulled my finger out and committed them. But I can go in and stage some of these files. Uh, one of the nice things is I can go in and be very selective in how I stage something as well. So if I just open this, I'm just using tab to open this. And I can say, well, I might just want this, this particular line. So I can press B and just select uh, particular lines I want to um, stage from a particular file. Uh, so it's a very fine-grained thing. I don't have to worry about breaking up hunks if I just want a single line uh, in my commit. I can just go in and stage that bit and uh, be very, very selective. And then there's lots of uh, other features you can do with uh, Maggot as well. So you can do cherry picking, you can do diffing, fetching, merging, uh, reverting, and stuff like that. So pretty much every, almost everything you can do on the command line uh, you can do in Maggot. And if there isn't anything, you, if, if you want to do something that isn't in Maggot, uh, then yeah, you can actually run a command line from, from Maggot as well and type in the actual specific command. Uh, so you can do like question, uh, like exclamation mark and go in and, and do a specific uh, git subcommand there as well if you wanted to. And it also gives you the ability to show a nice log of your commits. Uh, and then you can drill into your commits. Uh, oh, look, it's me. I committed. There we go. Uh, so you can see author date and so on. You can get little, uh, shows a little gravit uh, gravitar faces as well if your uh, account is set up like that. And uh, shows you the nice diffs very in a very clean way. Uh, and it'll show you diffs as well when the, um, uh, yeah, obviously when you open up the, the changes in the file, it's showing you the diffs uh, in here. Uh, those are untracked files. But each of these files I've started tracking. I can see the, the diffs just by opening them up. So it's a very nice, easy way to go and select 
which parts you want. And you can also, this is all also linked to uh, GitHub as well. Uh, you can do the same thing for, because uh, any, any Git supported repo, so GitLab, Git, um, Git whatever comes next. Um, uh, it's very easy to use. And this is offline, but I can actually sync with uh, GitHub and get it to pull down the, the pull requests that are outstanding and the issues uh, that are outstanding as well. So I can see a lot more of the information there without having to go outside of, outside of Emacs. Must have nearly run out of time by now. Somebody let me get off the screen. Um, there we go. Uh, yeah, so that's comparing versions. Oh, there's a really cool um, thing called Git Time Machine as well, which allows you to uh, go through the whole um, the whole kind of history of a file as well. Uh, I didn't check what the history was of this, but we can have a quick look. Uh, time, time Machine. There we go. Um, so, oh, oh, it's not tracked. There we go. Um, but you can basically just cycle back through the entire history of a file and, and see the changes. It's a great way to actually put in uh, a demo uh, and actually show you can show the code unfolding as you actually do that. So if you want to do a live demo but you don't want to do all the typing, then it, it's a great way to actually just go right back to the start and then slowly bring it up uh, the code as you've, as you've written it, as, or at least as you committed it into, uh, uh, into Git. And just one final mention, because I think I'm about out of time. Uh, I'm actually using something called Spacemax, which is a community-driven commu configuration for uh, for Emacs. So I don't have to configure a lot of the stuff myself. All of this is just kind of out of the box. It's a bit like a uh, batteries included uh, kind of thing. It adds a lot of nice uh, features in there without adding too much uh, extra weight. Um, a lot of people use Emacs, and they like basically curate their own um, really nice configuration, but this is from like hundreds of people's own experience. They can they contribute their own uh, experience and, and decide how to do this. It also adds uh, Vim styling, so I'm actually using Vim in here. So when I change uh, modes, it's actually changing from like green to orange or an orange to green. It's the different editing modes. So I've got the multi modes you get with Vim. Uh, I've got uh, I've got select modes as well. So every kind of all the Vim experience you want, you actually get in Spacemax uh, by default, and it makes uh, Spacemax makes it very easy to configure because you can just basically add layers. You don't need to manage individual packages. So it's a bit like Debian or Ubuntu. You can go and select meta packages, and it will install everything for you. Um, if you if I just want Clojure, then uh, which is a programming language, then I can just go and say add the Clojure name to the uh, the configuration and it will add all the packages that are relevant for me. So I don't need to know absolutely every single package there to just do a programming language. You can just add Clojure, Haskell, Lisp, and it will just add everything for me. It's got a really nice mnemonic uh, menu system. So if you want to find anything, then like applications are under A. Uh, if you want to jump around, it's under J. So it's a lot easier to remember all the key bindings because uh, uh, Emacs has some quirky uh, key bindings from uh, from the long past history of 1985. And there's also some really cool stuff you got editing, but that's a, that's a, a section in itself. So I'm going to uh, wrap it up there and just say that uh, Emacs is a great tool. The more you use it, the more you get out of using Emacs. Uh, there's a huge amount of things you can go and find about Emacs on the internet as well. Uh, but I hope it's given you some ideas about what you might want to do in terms of Emacs uh, for in, uh, to drive your digital world. Thank you very much.